Chris Wallace, host of Fox News Sunday. Chris, great to see you, and good morning there in D.C. Um, you watched everything yesterday, as we did here in New York. Uh, you were on a phone call with a lot of reporters from the White House as well, getting their take on it. Where do you think the Biden presidency is now, after yesterday and then last night? Well, not in good shape. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is that, that Joe Biden doesn't have enough juice, not with Republicans. He doesn't have enough juice with his own party. Because remember, this has nothing to do with Republicans. This is something that his party could do. He doesn't have enough juice with his own party. That's twice now in a month that he's gone up to the Hill, met with a House Democratic caucus, pleaded with them to pass uh, the infrastructure bill and, in effect, said, I, I'm going to cover you. I've got your back on this big tax and spend. I guess it's now down to $1.75 trillion. And as you just saw in Chad's piece, the, the left wing of the party, that's not enough for them. You know, I, I've been covering Washington, Bill, for 40 years, and you don't put the president in a room, maybe with a foreign lady you do, but not with, with certainly not with members of his own party, unless you know what the result is going to be. And, and, and you normally know the result because either people are too supportive of him or too scared of him to buck him. But that's not true with Joe Biden. He goes up there and he says, my presidency and the House and, and Senate Democratic majorities will be determined by what happens, he said, in the next week. But he really wanted it yesterday. And they ignore him. They, they give him the back of their hand. So uh, that's not a good sign for a president when he doesn't have enough juice within the yeah. members of his own party to get an important bill passed. All right, let's move on to the uh, gubernatorial race in Virginia. And, and I want to look at this poll and then have you react to it. Uh, it's interesting to watch what's going on here. This Fox News poll on the race shows that Republican Glenn Youngkin has pulled ahead of Democrat Terry McAuliffe less than uh, one week before the election. Uh, this is a big shift, Chris, from just two weeks ago when McAuliffe was ahead by five. So is Virginia a bellwether for midterms? And what can 22, uh, 2022 candidates learn from the tactics used? from each side? Well, we'll obviously have to see. You know, that poll is obviously uh, good news for Youngkin, bad news for McAuliffe. We'll have to see what actually happens next Tuesday. But I think there are some lessons. One of them is that, uh, that attacking Donald Trump, as Terry McAuliffe has and as Gavin Newsom did in the, re in the recall, isn't a surefire win for Democrats to win and to energize the Democratic base. Two, Education is a really powerful issue, and the issue of parents' role in their kids' education. And it may just be that this is a way, you know, we saw suburban voters, particularly suburban women, really flood away from the Republican Party in, in their uh, opposition or uh, disenchantment with Trump policies and Trump behavior. It may just be that education is a really effective way for Republicans to win them back. And let me say, if you think that the Biden agenda is have, having a tough time right now, and it is, if Terry McAuliffe, in a state that, that Joe Biden won by 10 points uh, a year ago in the, in the 2020 election, if, if it goes for a Republican against a popular former governor, Terry McAuliffe, next Tuesday, you're going to see Democrats run for the Hill. And the hills, you're exactly they're gonna right. Be, yeah. They're going to yeah. want to go as far away from Joe Biden and the Democratic agenda as they can. And if it was tough to pass, these bills in Congress this week mm -hmm. after uh, mm -hmm. if and you know we don't know what's going to happen sure. if McAuliffe loses it's going to be even tougher next uh, week. that's going to make for a very difficult week for this uh, this administration uh, go back to the point about going in the room with House Democrats yesterday maybe he was putting the squeeze on them you know saying my administration's on the line if you want to get reelected next year in midterms you got to vote for this thing but then the Progressive Caucus at 5 o'clock yesterday came out, and 96 members now said, we're not going forward until you present both bills at the same time. And you look at that social spending bill, Chris, and you start to get in the detail. It is massively complex. Yeah. Then you look at the pay-fors on the taxation side. We've never done it that way before. You know, 15% of profits from a company that makes a billion dollars or... If you're a millionaire making more than $10 million a year, it's a 3% surtax, and on it goes. Mm -hmm. And wh when you start to think about the complexities, and now that it's sitting on the shelf, you wonder, Chris, if the progressives hold together if both of these bills go down. What is your view on that? 
Well, it's certainly possible. And, and you know, for all the president's talk about a framework, they're, they're, it's just the it's an outline because you could see that there were people on both sides saying Bernie Sanders says I'm not satisfied with it. Kirsten Gillibrand says, you know, I don't like family leave out of it. So there's a lot of negotiating still to go on both of these bills. The only reason I think they're going to pass something is because the political impact of passing nothing. I mean, some people Maybe it's exaggerated, but some people would say that if he gets neither of these bills through, it's the end of the Biden presidency in year one, which is when presidents get most things done. Uh, so, so I think you have to wait and see. But if, 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 and again, if he didn't get anything through, uh, I think it would be really damaging to him and to Democrats, so, which is why I think they'll end up passing something, because I think the political alternative mm -hmm. is just... Unacceptable. Yeah. I mean, this is no surprise. The AP poll is showing that Biden's handling of um, spending negotiations ain't going so well. Um, a lot of people disapprove of it. Um, here is case in point. Uh, Chris Wallace, thank you very much. Appreciate nice to it. see you, Chris. We'll see you on Sunday. Bye, guys. Okay. Coming up, Fox News Sunday, check out Chris's exclusive interview with Pete Buttigieg, Secretary of Transportation. They've got a lot of things to talk about the supply chain crisis, the haggling over infrastructure. Uh, Pete Buttigieg will be with Chris on Sunday. Check it out.